So I decided I wanted to hook a display up to my Raspberry Pi, Pi Star DMR hotspot. It's kind of a lot of words. Anyhow, in order to make this happen, I had to pick up a couple of things. I picked up a Nexteon, I think that's how you say it, display screen. It's a 3.2 inch enhanced screen. I also picked up a USB to TTL serial converter. This is a little bit of a cheaper model that uses a CP2102 chipset. The converter was about five bucks. You can spend a little bit more money and get the more common FTDI chipset. But I got this one and was a little bit concerned I may have driver issues. But I'm pretty good at figuring out Chinese chip driver issues on Windows machines. So here are all the parts unboxed. And as you can see, they're two different sets of display cables. I'm probably going to use the ones that came with the Nexteon screen because they have a harness that I can plug directly into the screen. Here you can see information about the make and model and being enhanced, it also has a battery outlet for a real-time clock. It was about $35. I'll include links below. This is a USB connection and I really don't know what it does. I'm assuming it's for power, but I don't think I'll need it. I also got a little bit of a display case. It's not a full-size display case, but it'll keep my Nexion screen safe. Here's the converter itself. As you can see, the pinouts are clearly labeled on the PCB, and the same is true for the Nexion screen. I'll go ahead and roll in a wiring schematic that I came up with that shows how you hook up the display cable. It's important to note that the RX from the display goes to the TX of the converter, and the TX of the display goes to the RX of the converter. Here you can see the labeling on the display itself. Once you're wired up, go ahead and plug your display into your computer's USB port. One of the things I missed on film was that my Windows 10 32-bit Home Edition laptop automatically installed the drivers for the CP2102 chip. So we're winning there. It was no trouble at all to install that. The other thing I want to mention is, is that this is my first experience working with an Exeon screen, so I'm not an expert. Any advice, tips, or tricks that you may have and leave below will be greatly appreciated. You can see here that the display boots into its default configuration. The next thing we need to do is install the Nexteon editor. I'll include a link below to Nexion's website. What you want to do is go to Documents, Download, and pick Nexion Editor. And this will download the installation package. Once the package is downloaded, I'll go ahead and double click on that to begin the installation routine. The installation package works like any other installation package for an application that you install in your Windows environment. I do want to note that there is no Nexion editor for Linux or Mac. Just accept the defaults and when you're done it will open the editor program. The next thing we want to do is get an HMI file so we can write a configuration to our display. There are a lot of good folks on the internet who create HMI files for this purpose. What I would recommend is do some Googling for HMI files for Pi-Star DMR hotspots. I'm going to do a search for one that I found in particular that I liked. I'm going to go ahead to this user's GitHub page and download the HMI file. I browse the GitHub site until I find an HMI file that is appropriate for my display, the Enhanced 3.2. Once I find this file, I'm going to go ahead and download it. After downloading the file, I'm going to go back to the Nexion Editor application and load the file into the editor. Pretty simple. I just click on Open browse to my downloads folder and select the HMI file that I downloaded. Once it's downloaded, it'll load into the application and I'll be able to see the contents of the file. Again, it's not important that you use this exact same file, 
The point of this video is to show you how to find and load a file and then upload that to your display. To begin writing the file to my display from the menu bar, I want to click the Upload button. I am prompted with a dialog box. I want to select the COM port that my display was installed to. In this case, it's COM port 6. Next, I'm going to click Go, and this process takes a while. You can see here that the display is receiving information from the editor program. As mentioned, this process takes a while, so we'll come back when it's done. When it's finished, you'll be able to see the contents of the file have been uploaded to your display. Next, you want to use a web browser to connect to your PyStar hotspot. This is my test PyStar hotspot, so it just has the generic base image installed. I have not applied any configurations yet. I'm going to go ahead and log into the configuration panel and make some changes. In the MMDVM host settings, I want to go down and I want to change my display to Nexion. I want to change my display port to USB and then I'm going to use the latest ONS driver. Once that's done, I'm going to restart my PyStar. Before the PyStar restarts, I want to make sure that my display is plugged into the USB port on my Raspberry Pi. It doesn't matter which port. You can see that the HMI file was written to the display successfully. One of the things to note, I do have some bugs or some fields that aren't working correctly. So what I did is I made some further configurations on my PyStar, adding my DMR ID, my uh, frequency, and some talk groups. And I'm able to listen to talk group activity on the display slash PyStar. I'm probably going to have to play around with this a little bit more, so expect some further videos showing maybe driver configuration or further device configuration. I also may pick some other HMI files and play around with those as well. I do want to thank everybody for watching, and I do want to thank the folks on YouTube who build these HMI files for people like me to use. It comes in very handy. Anyhow, if you like this video and you want to see more content of a similar nature, go ahead and click like or subscribe. Thanks everybody. I really appreciate it.